What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Trap God Just and Big Body Brill. And we're gonna welcome you to the first episode of Ways of the Reseller. Okay? So basically, this episode is gonna be about how to become a reseller, how to do it the right way, and you know, learn a little bit from how we started it to probably guide you in a way to have you started also in your business or well, not even a business but like your side hustle when it comes to sneakers and yeah that's it stay tuned hey he need a genie he wish he could do it like this watch how i walk hey bend ass over get wet when i'm talking my shit watch how i work body Anything that's in my path gonna be taking a hit. Watch how you talk. Hey, come out your neck with some stupid shit busting your lip. Okay, so basically, the one important thing when it comes to reselling, and this is the first thing that you should do, is know your market, right? Know the people that are around you and what they want. So basically, you can't be in a market of people that are wearing Skechers and, and uh, <laughs> Heelys and... <laughs> if I see somebody wearing Heelys, yo. <laughs> and all of that and, and think that you're going to sell them Jordans, it's not going to happen. The only way that you're going to sell Jordans is online. And it should be a mixture of both. Um, if you're able to still sell them person, but also sell online, then that's a good market for you you should start selling reselling but if you walk down the street and you don't see a jordan in sight or adidas easy no 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 let me let me let me understand this if you see a spanish j okay <laughs> a tech yeah. flight or something like that i bet yo we do not stereotype people <laughs> but if i see a damn tech flight or some kids or or some <laughs> some heelys and all that down the street then you in the wrong market but so, some some filler yeah some filler some fill chick for luck or somebody feet then you in the wrong market but on, on a serious note though um you have to know your market to know who you're gonna resell to so just in case you can't sell it online you can sell it in person so that's gonna be number one. All right, so step number two is gonna be, the second most important thing is the capital. It might be the first, but uh, you need money to start. <laughs> yeah. You need it. You need the money, you feel me? Uh, you can't start with zero dollars. <laughs> yeah, you can't start, you can't walk up in your Foot Locker and be like, yeah, can I get that shoe? They gonna be like, what's your payment? <laughs> Oh, got it. Oh, God. <laughs> they go out the store? <laughs> Security? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can't, Yo. bro. But you need capital to start. And I say the best amount of money to start with, or the most, um, how do I say? The right amount. The right amount to start with is between 500 and 1,000. With the $500, you can at least buy two shoes at a time and flip, okay? Because when me and bro started, we only started with two sneakers. Um, that was the UNC 3s. They both retail for uh, $190. So basically, that was a $380 investment that we made $60 per pair. So basically, we sold it. We bought it for $190. We sold it for $250. We made... $120 within a span of 15 minutes and that was because right there and then it's a uh, how do I say um, right there and then we just sold a shoe because it was a release day um, but you cannot start any type of business not just reselling any type of business without a foundation and the foundation comes from the capital so 50 to 100 uh, 50 to no, well, 500 to 1,000 is a good basis to start your reselling side hustle, all right? Another thing that you need, part three of the foundation and when you're starting to resell is you need social media. Social media is too big nowadays that it's like almost impossible not to have it unless you're like really, really old age, but everybody has social media. 
I've been having social media ever since it first came out with Facebook back then and MySpace. And right now, the main three things I think that's helping us out with reselling is Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And I would say that you need those things is because if you're gonna be selling a lot in person, you have to advertise yourself. So one of the first things we did when we made Just Kicks is we made the Just Kicks sneaker page. You don't want to be selling a lot through your personal page because on your personal page, you're going to be posting mostly yourself. But on the sneaker page, you can post all the sneakers you have in your inventory. And the thing is, too, with that is you don't want to just keep posting the sneakers constantly all the time. Well, this is a good thing to do because we post on our story all the time. But people will know what you have that you probably haven't posted in a while if it's already on your on your your feed. So you just want to make sure that you 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 post your your product. Your product won't move if you don't post it and you will you'll be able to branch out more. Like yeah, you can always go down to like a college or to anybody and showcase what you have, but social media is that defeats the purpose of having to do all of that. You can just post it online and the whole world can see. So you know, social media is a big thing. Like a whole bunch of businesses have it now. So why not you if you're starting your own business with reselling? You need social media. Yeah. And it's not even you don't need it. You need it. You don't have a store yet. You need it. Even if you had a store, you, you wanna, still need you it. You still need it. You want to promote your store. So get social media. I say Instagram is the number one source, but Facebook and Twitter are not far behind. I would say just make all three if you have it already. It's also good to know about the shoes that's dropping and the hype and demand around the shoe is all through social media. You need you need it. Yeah. Get, get your social media. Don't be afraid to post things. If you don't have one of yourself, at least make one for your sneaker page. Yeah. Um, I would also say that when it comes to social media, that yeah, it's for a promotional tool, but it's also for you to know uh, the hype and when sneakers are dropping and just like this right um, if you never had any social media nothing like that how many releases do we would miss out on shop drops early access stuff like that exactly. like all these sneaker companies are dropping stuff randomly out of nowhere and why you didn't know because you didn't have social media exactly sometimes is, they don't post it to the app you, you would hear word like it's a rumor that goes around it could be true it could be false restocks mainly are true Click the link right away, boom, you're in there. Exactly. So, social media is definitely a must. It is probably one of the most important tools besides getting the shoe that you need to start That's where all our sales come from. We don't want to give nobody our personal number. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we give them the website and Instagram. So, that's it. Instagram, Facebook, whatever, but that's how you contact us. I run the Instagram, he uses it most of the time. Sometimes we have other people that use it. But that's how you usually contact us for anything that we have and that's how we usually find out what people want so get social media that is a must you can't sell without it especially if you want to grow so now let's talk about more about online now so everybody knows that StockX and GOAT are like the top two when it comes to buying and selling uh, like resale value sneakers like Jordan ones or anything like that but they have everything in stock which is crazy like almost everything that you could think of because they they kind of probably started like us with this reselling thing but they try to make it that you know there's a lot more uh what's it called um the C word where you start selling through consignment them. consignment exactly so of course we want to do that in the long run but StockX and go you need an account or at least need to have the app I would say so you can know the demand of the shoe so social media yeah it could be hype around the shoe but the stock value to that shoe can be or it can be skyrocket or it could just be what you already thought it was so when it comes to stock x you know we don't usually like to sell through there or anything but i would say it's a good tool to have because for instance if there's ever a shoe that you can't sell but you know you can make profit off of stock x then do it and if you don't know what to sell a shoe for in person, you know, StockX, they take out what's the percentage? Uh, it's 
or is it depending it's on several levels. Yeah, it right? depends on the level how many shoes. So are sold. level one is basically nine and a half percent, and then it goes down by 0.5 percent uh, every time that you hit another level. So the lowest that you can get is probably uh, an eight percent um, seller's fee or eight or seven and a half percent seller's fee. Don't quote me on it, but. Um, it's basically you use a stock X or go to gauge what your market should be paying for the shoe. Sometimes you can sell it higher because basically like us, right? Sometimes we sell shoes higher than what stock X is asking for it because uh, we have them on the same day of the release. Because with stock X and gold, you still have to purchase the shoe, right? And then you're gonna have to wait about, I would say five to seven days before you get the shoe. You're paying more for a premium of the shoe being here right now as soon as you want it so sometimes you can charge over StockX price sometimes you can't like say the shoe's been sitting there for a week or a week and a half and StockX is one price and you're another price um, I don't say that you should go over StockX price but um, use a StockX as a, a StockX and go as a, as a gauger of what you should sell your market to exactly. and also use it to keep your keep your options open if you can't sell it in person then you sell it on StockX or go and even if you probably take a loss or you know not as much profit as you want it's better than having your shoe sitting there and doing nothing for you yeah. right so, so um, stock x and gold when it comes to things like that and to sell a shoe in person there's three things you need to know about the demand of the shoe the stock value of it and i would say like the hype like yeah. you know, well the hype the hype is demand, demand kind of yeah. but like basically like yeah, so demand and the stock, I'll say. And then, basically, that's what you need. One and two. You need those two things to know how much you want to sell to in person. Like you said, just make sure you don't overdo it. And then make sure you don't you don't lower yourself as much. You don't need an account if you don't want to sell online. I would say you should use it as a backup because you never know if, you, can, you know, you just want the money back. And you know that you can get rid, get rid of it, make like $10, or whatever. And, so, and also, sometimes um, demand in person um sometimes online it exceeds that because uh say for example um uh, jordan one mocha some shoes are selling for 450. you probably can't sell one jordan pair for 450 in your area um in person but you can sell that online and sometimes you could sell it for 550 600 if a person really wanted it but um people might think you crazy sometimes like sometimes you might just have to not say take the loss and sell it online and make a little bit less money because then day you're still making about three hundred dollars. But I'm saying sometimes, yeah. sometimes that uh, it might not be uh, that you're selling it for a loss on yeah. StockX. You can sell it for more because look at the look at the clays. Like we couldn't sell the clays in person for seven hundred ninety dollars. Yeah, I don't even want to. I don't trust people like you. But <laughs> <laughs> you you can sell it on StockX for seven hundred thirty dollars. So sometimes you just gotta. Um, open your options a little bit more and just not you know narrowly think that you can just sell to strictly online i mean strictly to people in public uh you can sell online it doesn't matter uh, ebay ebay is another one so mm -hmm. ebay account uh StockX, go grailed uh, facebook got selling facebook too. yeah facebook marketplace is keep your options open when it comes to social media platforms um, so yeah yeah, yeah. So that's the social media uh, version of it. Um, so that's step number four. So the fifth and last part is step to the basics of the way of the reseller is your goal. You cannot start something without a goal because without a goal, you can quit so fast. And then it's no point for you to you know invest all your money into something, to start something, if you don't have a goal in mind so with our goal our goal wasn't to just get money right of course finance and stuff like that is a part of the goal but the whole entire goal is to make a community out of the brand you know the brand just kicks and that's what our goal is your goal might be different you might want a new car you might want a new house you might want it to be a source of income for you so that you could be your own boss but you need to have that goal in place. You don't have that goal, you don't say that goal every day. You won't work as hard or have that extra step to, 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 to do what you need to do. So speak that goal into existence and don't stop telling yourself, 
why did you start this? Ask that self every time that you doubt yourself, every time that you have a shortcoming in something, and that's just not when it comes to reselling, it just comes in life in general. Always tell yourself, why are you doing this? And have that in mind and set in place, and then you can just keep on going yeah. forward with it. Just keep planning ahead. Uh, there's gonna be times where, like, you know, there's gonna be some shoes that you probably can't get rid of or things like that. You always gotta have um, plan A, plan B, and then you gotta think about early releases coming out. I mean, releases, releases coming out later in the long run. Like, oh, I wanna make sure I have this much money so I can wild out and buy this many pairs, things like that. There's a lot of preparation that comes to when it comes to goals. You gotta make sure that you do everything step by step. And then you have to, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, improvise. But as long as you keep speaking into what you want to get to, it'll happen. Yeah, Just keep yeah. thinking positive. It's going to be ups and downs. We always have our ups and downs, but we always look at the bigger picture. Yeah, you always have to have the bigger picture. You always have to have the big goal in mind. And what's the end game for everything? Because without that, then um, all your hard work and effort is basically um, it's pointless. So, I would say that's the end of this episode right here. Um, the next episode is going to be the art of the cop, or basically, how do I say, how do you get the, the inventory? Um, so, let us know down below um, what you liked about this video, what you want to see next, uh, what we missed, and what we need to talk about in the future. Um, so, like, comment, hit the subscribe button. Um, say whatever you want down below we'll read every single thing and then follow us on Instagram at it's just kicks go on our website at it's just kicks.com and anything else that uh, we, anything I missed nah you good my guy you good my guy I think you got it okay so it's just kicks and uh thank you for watching our video we are